in the conversation of Xbox versus PlayStation, perhaps the most debated part of it is the idea of Xbox Game Pass. I mean, truly consider it. Just on paper, Game Pass is the best deal in gaming. The fact that you get access to hundreds and hundreds of games for just a low monthly fee. The fact that every Microsoft Studio game appears on there day and date. The second it's out, it's instantly on Game Pass. It's an interesting idea, but honestly, a lot of people have assumed that Game Pass is losing billions of dollars. Everybody kind of just thought that, to some degree, Microsoft is burning truckloads of money to keep people subscribing to the service. One of those things where they lose money in the short term to get profit in the long term. Well, it turns out that that's just not true. Microsoft has now released some top secret deep dive financials that actually show that Game Pass is bigger, it's more lucrative, and honestly, it's very different than I kind of expected. But let's talk about that. What's up gamers, Dreamcast Guy here. Hi, hope you're having a great day. Please like this video and subscribe if you haven't already. Now we first need to dig into some very fascinating technical details that you probably wanted to know about, but I want to try and explain. So Microsoft has obviously been spending literally billions and billions of dollars just buying up a lot of the biggest and best studios that happen to have a price tag. Here we see the 7.5 Bethesda deal. God, it's still bonkers to think about a $7.5 billion acquisition. Now, Bethesda was everything from Elder Scrolls to Fallout and even things like Doom happened to be under this umbrella. But when I first saw this, when this deal closed last year, I assumed that they were purposely losing money here in order to make the company value grow. So for a lot of these major conglomerates, the way it works is that it's not just about your subscribers. It's not just about the upfront purchases. It's not just about the paying fans. It's actually more about the back end of it. It's about company value. Like Netflix technically loses money every single year. The reason why is because Netflix spends tens of billions, like just humongous piles of money to make all their crazy high budget TV shows. Like obviously here we have Stranger Things. This stuff is not made to be instantly profitable. It's made to grow the value of the company. As long as the company value goes up, then they stay profitable. I have assumed for the longest time that that was the grand strategy that Microsoft was attempting to do with Game Pass. I kind of believed the idea that Microsoft isn't making you actually spend money on Game Pass to get back money. They're doing it because it makes you stay in their ecosystem. Microsoft is already worth nearly a trillion dollars. They're one of the biggest companies on the planet. The reason they're doing a lot of this stuff is to grow the Xbox brand, it's to grow the Microsoft brand, it's to consolidate power. Well now randomly, Xbox has released a detailed report that explains that somehow, despite the massive expenditures, Game Pass is profitable, and I think this signals sort of a change to the gaming industry that we may witness. Microsoft has finally said they're making a ton of money on Xbox Game Pass. So here it is. Uh, this weekend, they were finalizing a bunch of the different details of the acquisition of Activision. So Activision Blizzard is obviously being bought for $70 billion. Brazil recently approved it. A lot of countries have already approved this deal and given it the big old rubber stamp. But what's interesting is that people have discovered this set of slides that actually talks about the fact that Game Pass earned $2.9 billion last year. Now, this is interesting because there is a little bit of debate. Now, th this is actually created by Microsoft. This is a Microsoft slide posted here by uh, the Tweak Town, which is a very terrible website name. So they said that they made $12.5 billion last year. 2.9 billion was from Xbox Game Pass, and then 9.6 billion was from raw sales. Even these numbers are actually, they're very different than I thought. I mean, this is kind of interesting to me because in the context 
of that $7.5 billion deal we just talked about. The Bethesda acquisition, just that means they paid that off in a single year, which is kind of surprising. I also think it's interesting that it shows, honestly, just the fact that people are buying so many Xbox games beyond just Game Pass services. That's kind of shocking to me personally. I kind of assumed foolishly that 95% of people using an Xbox had Xbox Game Pass. I guess that's just not the case. I mean, looking at their own raw financials, clearly that is not the case. We can also see their hardware, games and services. So all this, this is just interesting. Total Xbox revenue. It's honestly kind of shocking to see that in total, including their hardware sales, they made $16.2 billion just last year. But what else about this is that it kind of strikes me as that there is still a little bit of a debate going on specifically on Twitter as to whether or not this is profit or whether this is revenue earned. Now, let me break that down. Think of something like if you're renting a thousand dollar a month office, you know, pretty expensive. And at the time you're making two thousand dollars a month at your job, then technically your profit is only one thousand dollars because the other stuff is all cost. It's overhead. It's the stuff to make sure you stay in business. There is still a little bit of debate, but it does seem like from their own phrasing, this is actually them claiming that they made $2.9 billion in profit. Either way, I do think that this is interesting because Phil Spencer himself, even last year, kept saying over and over again, Game Pass is sustainable. It's not burning cash. Game Pass is very, very sustainable right now. I guess even when I heard that, it's difficult to believe just because of the sheer size of the price tag of a lot of these acquisitions. $2.9 billion is a very big amount of profit, but when we're talking about $100 million acquisitions, which is practically what the Activision Blizzard deal is, this is a literal game changer. But what else is very interesting is they actually listed a secondary number that I'm not sure I've ever seen just publicly listed. Here, I want to zoom in here a little bit. Look at this. It says the entirety of the gaming industry is worth $198 billion right now. Like that means every game, every game company, every piece of DLC, Fortnite, Candy Crush, freaking cell phones, everything up to the Xbox Series X is worth $198 billion. So I guess that to me almost kind of flavors the Activision deal. That means that buying that for $70 billion is about a third of the entirety of the gaming industry. Microsoft is about to buy a third of the entire gaming industry. I think it's making me reflect on this because I'm not even saying this like to be an Xbox hater. I am kind of scared about these consolidations of power. I do think that if a subscription model can stay this profitable, it's good for the gamers. Objectively, it's cool that there is just such a cheap, accessible way to get so many hundreds and hundreds of games, old stuff and new stuff. But it does kind of make me worried about stuff 10 years down the line. In the short term, this is fantastic. I am just a little bit nervous about the idea of when PlayStation starts buying stuff up, if like Nintendo tries to take a stab and buy a bunch of stuff up. What happens when they just start to wall things in where you need their specific subscription service to do anything? I mean, what if they just start making it where Xbox Game Pass is practically required? You need it to even turn on the Xbox. I don't know. This stuff is a little bit strange. It's going to be fun to watch it all go down. It does seem like the Activision Blizzard deal is still definitely coming down the pipe, but as it stands, I guess I'm still just shocked that Game Pass isn't geysering money. The fact that it's profitable, I'll admit it, I, I am stunned. I am stunned that they are managing to make even $2.9 billion of seeming profit off this while acquiring a $70 billion company. Are they going to try and pay that off at like 50 years? I don't know. This is, this is different. But what do you guys think about it? Are you excited about the future of PlayStation, the future of Xbox, the future of Nintendo, or are you saying screw all of it? 
Thanks so much for watching, gamers. If you enjoyed this video, give it a big old thumbs up, share with your friends, and subscribe if you haven't already. But please, do me the biggest favor of all, and keep dreaming. By the way, I actually have a Steam Deck being delivered today. I am so incredibly excited, so I'm definitely going to do some sort of video breaking it down, talking about my thoughts on it, because I'm predominantly a console fanboy, so I'm kind of curious to see what the world's best handheld, how it will blow my mind. In the comments, tell me a Steam game that I should play first. Thanks so much for watching that video. If you want to see something else, you can always click this link to see what I put up last or, you know, subscribe and see what's coming up next. Also, I promise that whatever I do, it'll try not to suck.